Hello, welcome to the final webinar in our Level Up series, Understanding the Importance of Gray Balance for Process Control. Presenting once again is Mark Gunlock, a Solution Architect at X-Ray Pantone. I'm Robert Brotan, the Global Technical Marketing Manager, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. If at any time during this webinar you have any questions, please feel free to submit your question using the form on this page. We will do our best to follow up with you immediately after the webinar. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mark to get things started. Great, thanks Robert. So to start with, we're gonna talk about the G7 methodology today. This is really what the whole gray balance workflow is in modern printing. The G7 methodology is based on gray balance rather than dot gain. G7 to G achieves gray balance through plate curves when printing to any of the standards. These are the patches that are used for G7 near neutral print production. The G7 method in production has a start with the lab value of the gray patch. Is it near neutral? How does it compare to the lightness of the 50% black tint? You'll visually see differences very quickly when the CMY 50% patch and the K50 patch look very different. If there's a problem with the gray patch, then you look at the solid inks and the dot gain and so on to find the problems. For the best control of gray balance, it also can help to know how, the, how neutral the highlight and shadow grays are running and how their lightness compares to the 25 and 75% black tints. Let's take a look at why gray balance is so important. All these prints are made from the same plates and have the same solid ink density values. If any of the variables are off, then the color is gonna be wrong. And the gray balance is the one metric that all other others will impact. So here's one where the dot gain is off and clearly the the gray patch there, the 50-40-40, show the green tint there. And here's another one where the ink hues are out of spec. Uh, one of the inks picked up contamination, and you can see the 50-40-40 patch there is turning a little reddish. So clearly, um, when you see in the middle where the, the gray and the black patches are pretty similar, you're looking good, you can keep on rolling. Whereas if you see the 50, 40, 40 patch start to shift, getting lighter, getting color tints to it, then you, you know you got problems and you need to dig deeper. So let's start with our make ready. You're gonna start with G7 calibrated plates. The operator is going to run the targets of CMY that were taken from the G7 calibration run. You're gonna bring the densities up to the densities from that calibration run and you'll adjust to improve the LAB match to hit those targets if needed. Then check the gray balance. If it's out of control, check the dot gain and correct press conditions like the blankets, impression, and so on. Only small adjustments of the solid inks should be needed to balance the CMY tint values. If not, then confirm that the RGB two color overprints are right. If not, you could have an ink issue. So density as it relates to color. When the inks are the correct color, adjusting an ink density or the ink strength can hit the color targets. Changing the ink density or strength will move the endpoint in this AB graph in or out from the center. It also moves in the lightness and chroma in the 3D model of the color space. If the hue of the ink is not correct, then no adjustment of ink strength or density is gonna get it to fall into tolerance. As you can see here, where the magenta is off to the side of that tolerance ellipse, and you can see if you adjust your density or ink strength, that would move it in or out from that point. And at no point will it cross over into that tolerance ellipse. So that's gonna fail, there's no adjustment there. 
this is also going to impact the overprints of the blue and the red that are adjacent. And clearly, it's going to impact the gray balance as well. So this particular ink is a problem. And there, you're not going to be able to make any adjustments to get any of your other color on with this ink. Uh, it's probably a bad ink, uh, contaminated or the wrong ink, and you're going to have to swap it out in order to make this work. For offset printing, the press operator's main control is adjusting the ink keys to control the ink film thickness and measuring the density. For a narrow web press, the flexo operator may need to use density as well, especially if they have the option to change analog rules for different volumes. In all flexo printing, the operator must maintain the ink viscosity. This is impacted by the pigment in the vehicle carrier, as well as other additives. Adding extenders or water will reduce the available pigment load in the ink and reduce the ink strength. One tricky fact is that while additional ink pigment makes the ink color stronger, if the viscosity is too high, less ink will actually transfer from the analogs to the printing plate, thus printing lighter. Best match provides guidance for the operator to adjust either ink strength or ink density to achieve the closest match to the LAB targets. In this example, we measured a sample on a flexo press. The cyan is too strong, resulting in a 2.23 delta E. On the graph, we see the black dotted line showing where, the, where we are in ink strength. A better match of 0.83 is predicted if extender or water is added. The best predicted match is the green dotted line. The green area under the curve shows the range of ink strength values that will be in tolerance. So this, this ink here is a good ink. We can uh, improve our color by adjusting the ink strength, and uh, we're going to have a, an excellent match here for our run. In this scenario, not so much. In some cases, the ink may not be able to hit the target in any strength or density. Perhaps it's the wrong ink or contaminated, like I mentioned earlier. In this example, we measured a sample on an offset press. The density, in this case, of the magenta is too low, with a delta E of over four and a half. On the graph, we see the black dotted line showing where we are in density. However, the predicted improvement with the adjusted density is still over three delta E. The best predicted match is the green dotted line. And you can see that there's no density value that's gonna bring this ink into tolerance. So in this case, as said before, we'd have to change this ink out. But using a tool like best match is gonna give the operator much better actionable information to either make adjustments in his ink to get a good match, or know in this case where they can't get a good match and they're gonna to have to pull the ink and replace it with a different ink. Now let's take a look at, uh, at gray balance a little more. The goal is to get the lightness and the neutrality of the gray patches in tolerance. The weighted delta L represents a difference in lightness without regard to the color. The weighted delta CH represents the difference in the color without regard to the lightness. And you can use the guidance tools to adjust the solid inks while trying to keep them in tolerance. There's additional ways that gray balance guidance may be presented. The exact can show a graph that shows the amount and the direction of the correction required. And some prefer this view due to the larger visual size. In Teletrax, which is a press scanning system, will show how much and in what direction to move the CM and Y for each individual ink key on the press. In some cases, users like to document the gray patch CMY densities from the press calibration verification run and use those as a target for systems that don't have guidance tools like these.
Now remember, images are made up of tints. So dot gain is gonna have a huge impact on the images, even if the solid ink densities are on target. As we've seen before, these two images have the same solid ink densities, but they look very different because the, the dot gain or TVI is different for all the, all the, and all their colors held by the tints. If the CMY TVI values are out of control in different directions, the gray balance will shift and the images and color builds will shift in color with it. So what are our variables? First of all, TVI uh, is controlled and established uh, tint values are uh, developed during the press plate calibration run. These dot game values are not usually the same for C, M, and Y, but usually on a typical press condition, you're not going to find the spread, that is the difference between the lowest dot gain and the highest dot gain to be greater than say about 4%. If the plates have been measured and are in tolerance of the expected values, then there's an issue at the press. On offset press, those issues can include the blanket condition, the torque on the blankets, the pressure settings, chemistry, and other settings. On a flexo press, some of these variables will include things like the plate condition and wear, the mounting tape, the impression that's been set, and other settings as well. And these need to be addressed if they go out of control. So, once you get everything dialed in, you've corrected all those issues and make ready and brought those, those uh, tolerances uh, in tight, now, how do we run in production? Okay, how do we stay on color? Well, with the G7 method, the idea is you start by monitoring the gray balance and the black 50%. If these are failing, you should only need a small adjustments of the solid inks within the CMYK solid tolerances to fix things. Visually, you should be able to see these two patches, the 50 40 40 and the 50 patch, looking right, getting them to match. If you can't get it corrected, you should check out the LAB values of your CMYK ink. Did you pick up contamination in your press run in, from one ink to the next? Check the dot gain and correct the press conditions if they're needed. And confirm that the RGB two color overprint traps are correct. Are your inks trapping correctly? So this is the order you're going to manage the color as you run the press. Now, if you're running with a scanning system like the Intellitrax, you'll be able to measure all these things much more quickly and you'll be able to get feedback very quickly. But especially if you're working with a handheld instrument, you got to have a strategy. And by, by working with the gray balance as your primary measure, you can measure more often and see more quickly when things are failing and then only do the deep dive into measuring other metrics when the gray balance is failing. If the gray balance is staying on target, uh, again, especially the handheld, uh, you don't have to go measuring all the other values because the gray balance is the first indicator that something's failing. So I hope that was helpful. That's all I have for you today. And I'm gonna turn this back over to Robert. Thank you, Mark. Once again, if you do have any questions, feel free to submit them. Um, we're also going to pop up a survey after this ends. Um, it's just going to be a one question survey. If you would like someone to follow up with you, feel free to answer that. And uh, if you say yes, we'll, get, we'll certainly be happy to get you in touch with a salesperson to discuss anything that was talked about in this series. So, with that being said, I'd like to thank everyone for joining this webinar and for joining our series. So thank you and have a great rest of your day.